What's up, Navigating Academia family? This is your buddy and personal academic mentor, Dr. Jay Phoenix Singh, coming at you to be able to answer a question that may be on your mind right now, which is, hmm, Dr. Singh, I'm really considering either doing a clinical psychology PhD or PsyD, but I want to make sure that it's worth my time, worth my money, and that I can really hit that goal, hit that dream that I have of either being a clinician, a researcher, or somewhere in between. Now, obviously, if you want to get clinically licensed to really keep key piece of that puzzle because it doesn't just go from you completing graduate school in terms of all of your courses and so forth and then actually doing your research thesis to all of a sudden getting licensed. There's a key piece in the middle there, especially in a country like the United States or a country like Canada. So if those are the types of countries you're interested in doing your doctorate in, this is a great video for you because that middle piece is doing your APA approved practicum. So it's really important that the program that you actually apply to has as high as possible of a so-called match rate. Okay, And so because of that, we're going to be taking a look at a report from the American Psychological Association, which covers both the U.S. as well as Canada via the CPA or the Canadian Psychological Association. And the name of this article is What Programs Have the Best Internship Match Rates? Okay, So let's go ahead. You can go ahead and follow my cursor here on the screen. Right, We're going to be talking about percentage of students matching to an accredited internship. Now, there are some unaccredited internships out there. I don't know why on earth you'd want to do one of those. Really, all that matters is that the internship site has been approved by the APA. Let's go ahead and I'm going to zoom in a little bit here on this table so we can take a look on it, or on this figure actually, right? So here we go. We start at the very top with the lowest match rate type of program, which is doing a so-called freestanding side D. Now, these sorts of PsyD programs are usually quite expensive and only 1%, literally 1% of all freestanding PsyD programs offer any kind of tuition reimbursement, a tuition waiver, uh, financial aid, and so forth. That is crazy, okay? And like we can see here, only two out of every three students who go through that kind of a program actually get a match successfully. Now, if you find yourself in a freestanding PsyD program or any of these, and you're, you may be a little bit afraid and say, gosh, I really hope that I'm not going to be one of those individuals who doesn't get matched, you want to make sure that the match sites that you choose, you actually have a really strong goodness to fit with in terms of what it is that you want to do with your career, in terms of perhaps you went through a specific concentration or specific track at that PsyD in this case, let's talk about CIDs in that PsyD program. Uh and you also want to make sure that you're not just uh, going for like exclusively because you get to basically rank programs that you would like to be able to or sites that you would like to match at. So you want to make sure that you don't exclusively pick places that you know that everybody else is going to be applying to because that means that your likelihood of getting a match understandably is going to decrease overall. Okay, So just remember that you can be smart about this uh, and actually max out your chances of getting a match. Okay, So I don't want you to worry too much. If you're too worried about it, just book a session with me below. Let's go ahead and talk about it. We can pick some good sites for you. Second type of program is a university psychology department side D. In this case, we're significantly, in this case, kind of jacking up the percentage of successful matches, uh, which is up to 78%. And then close ahead of that is university so-called professional school side D programs. Uh, and then we get to the PhDs, right? Now, traditionally, clinical psychology PhD programs um, are ones that have higher match rates. And this is usually what's considered to be true by the field. And we can see right here here, if you follow my cursor, that this does appear to be the case, right, still. So practice and research-oriented emphasis PhD programs. Um, so this is something where they're really focusing on being so-called scholar practitioners. Uh, we go up to 85%. We get another bump when it comes to clinical psych PhD programs that really the valence is much more, the focus is much more on practice, right? So up here we're at 90%. And then just a little bit above, and I thought that this was interesting. It's only 1% difference, but still interesting is that research-oriented clinical psychology PhDs actually have the highest match rate, even above practice-oriented PhDs. But again, it's 1%, so margin of error doesn't really matter. Okay. Now, 
These stats were from a piece that was published a while ago now, and you need to take that into consideration. And the older this channel gets, the more outdated these sorts of things are going to become. So I hope that Norcross and colleagues are considering doing an update on this. But I found some really fascinating stuff when I looked at the article itself, because you should never just, you know, take a look at a figure like this and not go back to the primary source. So all I did was that I Googled the name, right, of the article itself here. And then what I like to do is put .pdf, right? So, you know, this title and then space dot PDF after it. And sure enough, I found a free copy of the article online. And so here's the article itself. Let's go ahead and take a look. And let's go ahead and just read together the abstract because I thought this was fascinating. So the diversification and proliferation of doctoral programs in clinical psychology call for their periodic comparative analysis to inform prospective applicants, their advisors, and the entire field. Great sentence. You gotta appreciate good writing. The authors surveyed directors of the 232 APA accredited doctoral programs in clinical psychology, and they got a 98% response rate. That is ridiculous for surveys. Regarding application numbers, acceptance rates, financial assistance, and the credentials of incoming students. Results are summarized for all clinical programs and then separately for six types of programs using the practice research continuum. And so this is what we saw there, right, in that figure. So freestanding PsyD, university professional school PsyD, university department PsyD, practice-oriented PhD, equal emphasis PhD, so on both, right, and research-oriented PhD. Lower acceptance rates and higher GRE, so graduate recommendation exam scores, were strongly associated with programs oriented towards more research training. Uh, and this uh, really kind of stands at the, the test of time here, right, because PsyD programs really don't focus as much on research. You may get a little bit of training on it. And yes, you do most of the time have to do some sort of a capstone project. And usually they call that a dissertation. But usually the research emphasis just is, is not there in the same way. Um, but my hope always for those of you who are PsyD applicants is that you come out of this whole thing feeling that you're becoming conscientious consumers of the peer-reviewed research literature. Uh, because if you're not learning during the doctoral program how to be able to successfully read research articles and evaluate the methodological rigor, with which those studies are being performed, uh, you are in genuine trouble, right? And the reason I say that is that you are unable to be able to call bullshit. And with so many millions of articles getting published a year, literally 1.5 million articles a year for the last 10 years and counting, this is something where you need to be able to separate out the wheat from the chaff in terms of the good research and the bad research. Bad research gets published in peer-reviewed journals all of the time. And we have videos on that as well if you're interested in learning kind of how could that be, but it's actually a pretty straightforward reason. Okay, um, so lower acceptance rates and, and clinical psych PhD programs because of the, the more the larger kind of amount of competition uh, for many reasons. One of them is largely having tuition waived, right? Um, those are usually programs that have a GRE uh, requirement. So obviously there is some commingling between those variables there, okay? Um, so let's keep reading. For example, research-oriented PhD programs admitted far fewer applicants. Look at that, 7% versus 50%, my God, of freestanding PsyD programs. You guys know on this channel, I always tell you the truth. Follow the money. Follow the money. If 1% of freestanding PsyD programs offer any kind of tuition waiver, and it doesn't matter how many individuals you cram into a classroom, and the overwhelming preponderance of professors or adjunct faculty members who are getting paid $1,500 to $3,000 to be able to teach each course, that means that essentially, you can have three out of 30 students in the room. Those three students, right, they're covering the cost of that professor coming and teaching the class. The rest is straight up profit after you take overhead into consideration. They are money-making machines, these programs, okay? So that makes a lot of sense, right? Um, obviously, 7% being uh, the range in terms of uh, PhD programs. Um, this is something, there's again, a lot of reasons for that. And ever since the pandemic, these numbers have gone down precipitously. Uh, so not surprising. To be fair, those ID programs also, the acceptance rates have now gone down precipitously as well, right? But nowhere near the same as uh, clinical psych PhD programs, okay? Freestanding ID programs awarded significantly less full financial assistance to incoming students, 1% versus 89%. Oh my God like I was just mentioning, and required one year less to complete than did PhD programs. 
Overall, PhD level students were more likely to secure an APA or an association of psychology's uh, postdoctoral and uh, internship centers, so APPIC, right? If you ever see that acronym, that's what it stands for, internship, then we're side these students. Good to know, right? The authors conclude with observations about the historical changes in heightened differentiation of doctoral programs in clinical psychology. So I do recommend that if this is the kind of thing that you're interested in reading, right? Again, if you just go ahead and take this URL, which is right here on your screen, uh, you can pause the video and just type it in and read this article. Again, it's a while ago now, but remember, you can always contact whoever the corresponding author is. In this case, it's John Norcross from University of Scranton, which is in Pennsylvania, right? So how are you going to figure out John's contact details, Professor Norcross's contact details? Down here at the lower left, right, you always want to take a look for correspondence, right? And here we go, right? He's in the Department of Psychology at the University of Scranton, and there you go. There's his email address. You can contact him today if you wanted to, and just ask whether or not he's got any updated data on that. So that's what I've got for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.